Welcome to a spooky episode. This is a salt lamp, and yes, it tastes like salt. Is there salt in the air now? Disney is a place of laughter and cheer, promoting happiness and wonder. But there's also a world of ghost sightings and scary stories. It's not surprising that over the decades, people have reported ghosts in the theme parks. An empty theme park at night is begging for ghosts to just be strutting the premises. If you aren't convinced yet, just imagine a Country Bear Jamboree animatronic not moving. Or how about Buzz Lightyear malfunctioning? It's haunting enough. Before I start, I want to make it clear that I'm making jokes in this video, but I'm not making light of any of the people that have died in some of these stories. Now let's get to the ghosts. Let's start where ghosts are expected. Haunted Mansion. At Haunted Mansion, the ghost count is a steady 999 happy haunts. But every now and again, people try to extend that number higher and higher by dumping Ash's other loved ones into the ride. It's not allowed, but people do it a lot. One day, at Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, a woman had to ask cast members if she could dump her little boy's ashes into the ride. They said no, but I guess that wasn't the answer that she wanted, so she did it anyways. And I do think it's a weird place to spread ashes, considering the ride is full of darkness, screaming, yelling, and it's probably nightmare inducing for little children like her son. Why wouldn't she leave his soul at something warm and nice and happy like Dumbo or the churro cart? Children love churros. I do see cinnamon sugar ashes uh, mix up debacle happening at the churro cart, so probably not the best idea. You've heard of the sour apple churro. You've heard of the candy corn churro. You've even tried the banana pudding churro. Ew. But have you ever tried the cremation churro made with real love and person? Oh gosh, that's so, ugh. But it looks like this wasn't some twisted punishment her mother was giving her child because he actually loved the Haunted Mansion attraction and may have even said that he wanted to be one of the Haunted Mansion ghosts. However, being a ghost must not have been as fun as he had imagined, because guests have said that they've seen a crying boy at the ride's exit. Guests try to talk to him and see if they can help him out, but he acts like they don't exist. And then when guests return with a cast member for some extra help, the boy is gone. People also reported seeing a little boy running throughout the ballroom scene in the ride, and then when cast members heard this news, they went to search and found nothing. There's also a little boy ghost in Pirates of the Caribbean, and many believe that this is the same boy. Who knows if this is the same boy or not, but I hope it is. Maybe he found some new enjoyment with the pirates. Maybe he's taken the dog with the key on a walk, even though the dog is bolted to the ride because he's an animatronic. But you get what I'm saying. I hope the boy's playing with some pirates. Now on to the next ghost, the monorail ghost. This next ghost story comes from 1966. 19-year-old Thomas Guy Cleveland, which what a name, wanted to attend the Disneyland grad night. The grad night is when recent high school graduates get to experience the theme park all to themselves during after hours to celebrate their graduation. Disneyland's been doing these grad nights since 1964, and they continue to do them today. Now back to Thomas. He wanted to join his friends in the event. However, he graduated high school last year, so he couldn't go. To get in, Thomas decided to sneak in. He would do so by climbing the two 16-foot perimeter fences and then walking across the monorail track. Then when he's far enough down, he would scale down the monorail track and have a night full of five-minute waits and Mickey pretzels. I have to imagine there's a better way about going about this. I mean, Thomas, it's 1966. Security is very loose at the Disney parks. I mean, bag checks aren't even a thing until it's decades later. So he probably could have made some excuse to slide into the park. I don't condone going trying to sneak into the parks think you should buy a day ticket, but I mean, if he's already going to sneak in, I'm just saying there's probably a safer way he's going to do it if he's going to do it illegally. But that's not how the story goes. Thomas made it over the fence and he was on the monorail track. A security guard spotted him and warned him of the danger that he was in. I mean, he's on a monorail track. A monorail could go by at almost any minute. Thomas ignored him and then he leapt down the fiberglass canopy, which was beneath the track. This canopy wasn't low enough though, and a monorail came by and struck him, dragging him 30 to 40 feet. Ever since, people have seen a 19-year-old running along the track of the monorail when it goes by, exactly where he had passed. Some say the monorail ghost is only visible at night, like when the event occurred. And some say that he disappears once the monorail has passed. The next haunted occurrence takes us to the stars. Space Mountain. Here we meet Disco Debbie. What a name! This is a good ghost name. I'm saying 6 out of 10 for the ghost name. Disco Debbie sounds like the life of the party. Like, she'll do a keg stand, and then she'll hold back your hair because you've eaten too many jello shots. Debbie's a wild stallion, but we love her. 
We love you, Debbie. We love you. Her Debbie story also stems from a real life event. Debbie was a sweet, popular high school girl that everyone seemed to pretty much like. And she also used to get people up and dancing at the old space stage in the summer of 1979. One night, Debbie's mom was waiting to pick her up from work. Debbie worked at Space Mountain, and it was getting pretty late, later than Debbie usually got off work, and that was getting her mother a little nervous. More time passed, and her mother became even more worried, and at this point, Disney security was called. After security searched for her on the Disney property, they found Debbie in the backstage area of Space Mountain. She had died of a brain aneurysm. People believe Debbie's ghost hangs around Space Mountain to this day. It glows green and flies around. Space Mountain is a popular ghost hangout because now we're going to be talking about another ghost at Space Mountain, Mr. One Way. I couldn't find any reason why his name is Mr. One Way, but I would imagine because the ride only goes one way, but that's like 95% of rides. I don't know. It's not a good name. Three out of 10. And do we ever get to vote on ghost names? If so, the next ghost is going to be called Gloopy because no one can be scared of a ghost named Gloopy. Gloopy's not going to scare ya. He's just going to give you a weird slimy back high five. He's gonna be like, thanks Gloopy, that was awesome. Or he's gonna give you like an awkward side hug that you never asked for. Gloopy's harmless, Gloopy for president. Now Mr. One Way also has some real life ties. In the 1970s, a man died on Space Mountain, and since that day, people claim to see a man with a red face and red hair sitting beside them on the ride, many people believing that this ghost is that man. People see him throughout the duration of the ride, but once the ride is done, the red faced man is gone. And Mr. One Way has also been seen in the cast member break rooms in the Space Mountain building. Other people claim that he's actually not a man, but a child, and he poses as a regular person. He's in line, he's talking to other guests like a child would. But then everybody has this moment where they think, this child's not from this time period. Kind of like when someone says, he who would pun would pick a pocket. Or, hot dog. Something like those, something that makes you think, you good? Like, you're cool? Because you just said hot dog, and it's 2020. And others say he's a friendly ghost that is actually a man, talking to guests in line and just chatting it up. And you know what, ghost man, Mr. One Way? You seem all right. Now, the man with no eyes. Now, this story is from a post by the girlfriend of Silver Hayes 269 on disboards.com. Now, they went to Animal Kingdom, and they are about to board on the ride Dinosaur, the loud, back-and-forth jolting thrill ride. As they got in their time rover, an older man sat next to them, who they described as pretty nondescript old guy. Nothing fancy about his clothes, had gray hair, and a short beard. And was wearing a ball cap, which he didn't take off. And the ride, like I said before, is a loud and intense thrill ride. And this man had no reaction to any of it. He didn't laugh, scream, yell, or even let out a little bit of pee. They thought this man was a little odd, and who wouldn't? I mean, there's dinosaurs and asteroids coming at you, and you're not even gonna give us like a little ooh, or a ee, or a ooh, you got me there, buddy. I mean, who remains completely reactionless on a ride like this? It's like blowing out your birthday candles, but not pushing your lips inward. It's off. And as one does after a ride, they decided to see their on-ride photo. You know, the photo that they take while you're on the ride? And when their photo came up, they noticed the old man had no eyes. There were black holes where his eyes should be. He didn't have sunglasses on the ride, and nothing was different about his eyes prior to going on the ride, so it can't be chalked up to some weird reflection from the camera flash. But you may think, okay, what if it's like a photo software fluke and it just happened to him? It's rare, but it's possible. But what makes me still question all of this is that in the photo, they said that the man was staring straight ahead, not at the camera, not at the one dino that you can see because the ride's very dark, like he was staring at something or someone. After seeing the picture, they recall never seeing the man actually leave the ride or walk in front of them or be behind them. They said they weren't seeking out this man on purpose, but since they were standing right next to him, they would have seen him leave. The black eyes, the reactionless composure, and a rapid disappearance all give good evidence for a ghost. And that's five ghosts from the Disney parks. There's a lot more ghosts, stories, and encounters, and stuff like that. And if you like that, let me know in the comments so I can make some more. And as always, please subscribe to me on here, like and comment on this video, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and most recently, TikTok. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a spooky day. See ya.